Right, hi everyone, and I uh, hope you're well. Uh, my name is Daniel Greenoff, Senior Football Development Officer. For those who don't know me, obviously work at Cornwall FA. Um, thanks for your attendance tonight. Um, we're trying something different by putting on, a, a, I suppose, a Sunday evening, and hopefully that sort of suits you guys, and it's a, a freer time than maybe a week, a weekday or week, week evening. Um, obviously, thanks for all your hard work, especially during a very difficult season, um, and it's been a little bit up and down with Cornwall, especially as we move through the tiers quite quickly and, weren't, and we were sort of quite lucky, I suppose, where our, our numbers were lower and we were able to play quite a lot of football. Um, and then obviously the weather always comes in at that time of year and then obviously with another lockdown. But just thanks for all your hard work and effort so far this season. And hopefully in the not too distant future, we can get back to um, back to playing again. So thank you very much for your attendance again from me. Uh, we'll make sure that the register's done and that's all sort of, uh, fed back in but for now I'm going to hand over to Martin and Vinny who are going to work through the sort of CPD event and then obviously as we go through uh, feel free to ask questions and, and get on camera and, and show your face as well. Thanks very much Martin and Vinny. Hey everybody good evening Um thanks for joining us tonight so hopefully a Sunday night is um, a nice way to wrap up the weekend um, and it, it, it's a nice ideally I suppose it's a footballing weekend it's not been quite that but hopefully this gives you that football fix if you haven't had it um, Vinny if you want to flick on to the next one we'll just tidy up some housekeeping um, so just uh, I've, I've gone through and muted everybody please don't take that personally uh, just we were getting a bit of feedback but if we can try and keep microphones muted for, for the time being uh, there's a raise hand function if you want to dive in. There isn't loads of us on the, on the call though so if you just want to dive in that's pretty okay as well so don't worry uh, the chat box, we'll be keeping that on screen as we're, as we're going through. So if there's any questions you want to stick in there, if you want to make a point, um, then please do. Or, or if you want to try and answer or contribute to any questions we pose your way, then, then please make use of that if you'd like to. Uh, we will be sharing this. You'll, you'll get a version of this presentation. You'll also get the recording from tonight. Uh, I believe Dan's going to stick it on the Cornwall FA YouTube channel so you can drop back into this if you want to. And obviously with the current timings, um, Obviously, we're going to talk about COVID. How can you not? But it, this isn't, we're not after COVID specific information at the moment. This is around following what you've been following over the last few months and particularly at the moment. So we'll just sort of introduce ourselves and our, our details. So obviously, I would imagine most of you know Daniel, the senior FDO at Cornwall FA. My name is Martin Dighton. I lead um, on the women's and girls aspect around our coach development offer across the southwest of England. Uh, Vinny leads around the PE aspects, so doing a lot of work with school teachers and linking them into grassroots football as well. So there's us. Um, Vinny, we'll go straight into our first game. So those of you that have got okay. the chat box available, we're going to play spot the ball. So we're going to flash one up on the screen. Is it ball one, two, three or four? How quick are you to get a number in the text? Which one do you think it is? And I've deliberately not picked recent games in case you knew it. Oh, I love it. Straight in with numbers. Good work. Will anybody be right, though? Give you 10 seconds to get more in. Lots of ones and twos. Go on, Vinny, on you. We'll give them the answer. Oh, just waiting for, uh, we've got a number four in there. So let's see. It is number well four. Done, Good work, Chris. Point to you. Well done. Prizes in the post from Cornwall FA. Is that right, Daniel? Uh, next one. <laughs> So there's Boruch clearing out absolutely everybody except the ball. Which one is it? Can you get your number in the chat as quick as possible? Go on in, Vinny. I'll leave it to you for when you decide to uh, announce the winner. Yeah, Jamie and Craig were in very, very quickly. I think they listened to your clue, clearing out everything yeah. but the ball. <laughs> well done, Jamie and Craig. Good work, you too. Okay, next one. Go for it. Oh, where are we going? We got any winners? No, not yet. <laughs> There's a clue there. Find the number that hasn't been picked. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> Someone put two. <laughs> yeah, reading the chat box as well. Uh, that was more of a predictable one. Uh, yeah. You see us, looks as if we got good contact on that. There you go. Boom. Couple more. Craig straight in with four. I don't know the answers, by the way, guys, so I'm not trying to give you any uh, major clues. We've got the full uh, full gamut there. We've got one, two, three, and four. 
So it was number four. Well done, Craig. And our final one. Can't keep up with the numbers okay. coming so quick. We've got a yeah, quick got bunch the, on the keyboard got, here, haven't we? That's okay, we've got the full range. We've got an unknown user on number one. Yeah. Atex, it was number three. And uh, that was Martin. Martin Y. Well done, Martin. Good work, Martin. Proud of you. Oh, sorry, my apologies. I said last one. La this is the last one. Yeah. We don't want to labour it, so we're not doing this for a full hour. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. We've got a two and a three. And a four. Number four it was. And that was David. Well done, David. If you went four for most of those, you'd have done okay. Um, give us your score out of four in the chat. Give us a, a four out of four. Did anybody smash it? Anybody get all of them right? I'm not sure. There wasn't many right answers. If you did, let us know. Cool. Okay. So we should be seeing our, uh, our first real screen now, guys. And March, you just want to give a, a brief intro in terms of those initial images, and then I'll pick up from you. Yeah, absolutely. So I suppose a little bit of background. Um, Daniel, we, we started trying to organise this, didn't we, before Christmas? And at the time, we were looking at things going, right, we've, we've just had another kind of lockdown that didn't affect grassroots sport directly. But then we've had a break over the, the Christmas period. It's winter when games are called off left, right and centre. So tonight was going to be about returning to play. What might we need to do for our players to just bring them back into the game and bring them back into that? that environment of football and then suddenly that changed what what are we on 10 days ago now something like that yeah and we started to think so what what are kids especially because the majority of you will coach kids I'm, I'm not saying it's everybody because there's a couple of open age but what are, what are kids like life like at the minute um so I've got a little four-year-old and I'm sure many of you on the call have got kids as well I know Vinny your, your lads how old you 11 is it 11 yeah yeah so there, there'll be different perspectives but the general feel of it is even my little four-year-old is missing his mates He's talking about his, his friends that he's not seeing. We're having a Zoom call with, with the school once a day, but he doesn't get to interact with them. It's certainly not what his normal interaction would be on a daily basis. And he's missing that connection. He's also missing running around like a headless chicken. And I mean that in a really positive way. If you think what playtime's like for my lad most of the time, it's carnage, it's chaos. We went for a walk this morning and he just ran. He just got so much energy to burn off and charge around. And I'm thinking that it, no matter what your age group, that will be similar. You know, he is longingly looking outside at times, wanting to do, to go and be free. Um, so how do we maybe help kids with some of that, especially that social connection? Because that's the bit we probably can control most. And then the other bit was, I mean, Vinny, you and I, we, we can certainly resonate with this. The amount of time we spend staring at video calls, and I know we're doing one tonight as well. But we've lost that real human connection, that bit where you have a one-to-one -one conversation. I, I've hardly had a phone call over the last few months, let alone a one-to-one -one chat while we were out walking somewhere or a proper face-to-face -face meeting with someone. And I'm definitely missing the football conversations, even though we work for the FA. So we thought, well, some of you might be similar. Some of your kids might be similar as well. So maybe we start looking at this. That can we still keep and, and actively encourage a relationship and a connection with our players as we go through this lockdown because I hate to be the bearer of bad news but we don't actually know when it's going to end we've got rough ideas but we're in this at the moment I know Vinny you, you thought about it even further than that didn't you yeah just uh, picking up from where Martin's left off there guys and uh, it, it's great that we've got a range of uh, age groups involved in terms of uh, who you coach and I think this why why are we suggesting a connection uh, via an online call can apply to the children the teenage players and the adult players as well i think that human connection is really really important so uh very quickly in the chat box that's not a difficult question that next image what does that image represent so if anyone would like to just respond to that so that image for me is crucial if we really believe in the whole child or the whole person then staying connected online has got to be better than doing nothing and if we believe in a person before player then that's where that model is really really important 
So even tonight, our first engagement with you was asking you to think a little bit, just a little bit of fun, a little, little bit of spot the ball. But we're hopefully going to show you tonight how you can maybe hit all four corners by engaging online. Um, so I've not got anything back in the chat box from anyone. That is the four corner model. Just a bit of a variation in there with the terminology holistic development in the middle in the, uh, the purple hexagon. Perhaps a second why. We're about to enter um, the what is uh, research tells us the most difficult and miserable time of the year. Blue Monday is coming up very, very soon. And so as a result, you'll be aware that through the FA Respect Programme, we have our 21 days of positivity. I'm sure you've had an email from your county FA about signing up. And I think for us as the adults, anything we can do to keep our youngsters positive, anything we can keep do to keep our parents of the youngsters positive, and anything we can also do to keep ourselves positive. So some of the stuff we're going to talk about tonight, I have been doing, as well as working for the FA, I am a grassroots coach, just like you. And I've been doing, in fact, I've done three online sessions now with our under 12 age group in the last 10 days. And I've come away from those sessions absolutely buzzing. So yes, this is about the youngsters and the teenagers and the adults we coach, but it's also about us. How can we keep ourselves positive and upbeat? And then finally, there might be a bigger mission. And this is literally something that I only came across in the last 24 hours. Uh, I was listening to the radio and this uh, Peace Players program popped up. And it's actually a basketball program. Uh, the thing that uh, caught my attention, it was talking about Northern Ireland and the way this program is actually connecting youngsters, teenagers from either side of the divide, if you like. And they're finding that the online connection is being stronger than the physical connection, getting those youngsters together in real time, face to face. Uh, so just a little bit of a link there for you. I say I came across it in the last 24 hours and it's a really uh, great program uh, around basketball. So a few reasons there as to why we might have some online connection with our players. Uh, Mart, anything in the chat box or anything you'd like to chip in before I jump on? No, it's all quiet and, and in the chat box, but I, I'd imagine some of you have been doing stuff already. And I think we're, we're quite key to say, uh, you might turn off as I say this, but tonight's not going to be rocket science. You know, there, there are stuff that I'm hoping you, you've been thinking about. There's stuff that this might give you the little nudge to try. There might be something new you pick off someone else. We'll open the floor later on and certainly at any point stick stuff in the chat box that you've been doing with your players. But we're hoping tonight might just give you a bit of inspiration to try and find a way to connect with your players over the next coming weeks. Something we've got to get right though, Vinny, isn't there? So if you flick to the next one around, around safeguarding. So I want to be really clear that if we're going to go into online stuff with our players, especially those of you with under 18s, there's little bits we've got to follow and we've got to get right. The last thing I want is any of you to get into a, a difficult, sticky situation because you've done something with the best interests, but actually you've, you've set yourself up to cause yourself a bit, a bit of trouble. So don't be afraid to go and seek further guidance. There's, there's Claire at the County FA who's the welfare officer. You should have a welfare officer at your club. I'd suggest you involve those around your club when you do set things up just so that you're completely safe. Um, if you flip to the next one, Vinny, I, I don't want you guys to read this, but it's in there so that when we send it out to you, um, this is the official guidance off of the FA.com around safeguarding. And if I give you a summary of all those words on there and you'll see the two links that you're welcome to click on and go and spend a bit of time looking at, don't do anything that you wouldn't normally do on an outdoor practical coaching session. So, for example, you wouldn't turn up to a coaching session and appropriately dressed. You wouldn't have a one-to-one -one with a child away from everybody else with no, no other adults there. You wouldn't be there by yourself without any adults, even with a full group of kids. There's just some common sense stuff to pull out of it. But what I don't want is anybody trying to do the right thing and actually cause themselves some difficulties. Like I say, if any of you need further guidance, you've got our details or you will have them following this. You've got the county FA details and you should have your own welfare officer if you're not sure. Now, at the same time, I'm not trying to scare you. I just want to make sure that everybody's okay and doesn't feel they're putting themselves in a difficult position. Is that okay with everyone? Anyone want to jump in or not happy about that? I can see a few nods down the bottom, so I'm hoping that's the general feel. Right, we're going to go into our first activity. Uh, and Vinny, I know you've been doing this, so we're going to kick off with one that you've been, you've been doing live. Go for it. What can you tell us about this one? 
Yeah, absolutely. So as I've already said, guys, uh, we've been doing a few online sessions. My age group is under 12. It's the, the group that my son plays in. And um, to be honest, we hadn't done any online connecting during lockdown one, partly because uh, it was all so strange for us. Uh, lockdown two was very brief. Uh, but on this occasion, moving into lockdown three, and particularly the fact that we think it's an extended period of time, uh, we've actually been doing, if you go back to that four corner model, uh, a little bit of uh, tech to technical and tactical analysis. Uh, so being showing the youngsters a, a little bit of video footage, uh, sometimes sending that to parents in advance. And that's actually been a main part of our 45 minute online session uh, where the youngsters have chipped in uh, a few observations uh, around a little bit of action. So uh, if I just give you a flavor of uh, the sort of things we've been looking at, So just a YouTube link here, as usual, just, uh, just the advert. You're not it's getting not... any money out of that, I hope. As you know. uh, and then I'm just going to jump to, uh, you might have spotted the accent, guys, so I am a Liverpool fan, but it's not the Liverpool goal that I was actually highlighting. It was actually the uh, the Villa goal. In fact, I'm just going to take it back a little bit further. And basically showing the youngsters 30 seconds of footage. Um, and asking them just to pop in the chat box or just to pop hands up uh, to make some observations. So it's as simple as that. Obviously, we know for engagement purposes, you don't want the footage to be going on for two, three minutes, 30 seconds of footage. And I'm going to do the same with yourself, you guys now, just as a little bit of a trial run. We'll just watch Louis Barry's finish one more time. And there we are. So anyone in the chat box, just from a point of interest, is there anything that you would like to highlight about that little bit of footage? So Vinny, just jump in then. W would you be expecting something sort of technical or tactical or are you looking for something psychological so that you know, around his decision making or the way he reacted to the opportunity? What, what, what sort of angle did, were you looking for it? With the, the age group of the youngsters I've got, Mart, I was expecting them just to come up with something technique skill related. And of course, the youngsters, uh, the, the first two comments that came up, I think we had three or four put their hands up straight away. And their comments was uh, in relation to the finish, uh, the way that he actually bent the ball around the keeper, um, the way that he went for accuracy ahead of power. So, you know, good stuff. Um, and then one of the boys, actually our midfield playmaker, if you like, uh, talked about um, what I would consider to be individual tactics. And it was Louis Barry's first touch. Um, with a little bit of Q&A for me, he talked about the fact that the first touch was across the, the line of the defender. And therefore, if the defender was going to do anything, he was simply going to have to commit to what would have been a red card offence. So um, very open, to be honest, mate. Uh, and with the... Um, I'm formerly a PE teacher, so with experience, I basically wanted to give the youngsters an opportunity to say whatever they wanted, and then obviously take the questioning from there, as we would in a coaching session. Yeah, absolutely. In almost chance to just get a feel of where they're at based on yeah. what they what they notice, what they see. I mean, I, the bit that sticks out for me around that is is his reaction after the game, the interview, where he just can't sort of get his head around that he's just scored against Liverpool at the age of sixteen. And yeah kind of the positivity around that and his excitement and his aspirations that he's probably had for years as a kid. Some of the kids in your team might feel like that. You know, one yeah. day I want to be there. So and I think that'd be fantastic. Just to give the guys a little bit more flavour, we actually had three video clips. That was the first one. Um, we then showed the, the Spurs goal, uh, the what would it, would it be the fifth goal uh, against Marine. And it was a lad called uh, Alfie... I was going to say Alfie Dunn, it's not Alfie Dunn. Um, and he was a 16-year-old. So Louis Barry is 17-year-old. Um, Alfie as a 16-year-old. And um, the final goal was the goal scored uh, for Crawley Town, the first one against Leeds. And uh, that young lad was just 20 years of age and he'd been released from, uh, from Spurs after a, a really nasty car accident. So you're right, Mart. We talked about the ages of those players, 
And then we linked it back to our grassroots club, Easons and Sports in Banbury in North Oxfordshire, playing the Hellenic League. Um, would the boys like to, at 16, 17 years of age, be getting into the first team? So the conversation, as with all good stuff where there's engagement, started to go off at uh, lots of different angles. The main thing is the youngsters really engaged in it. So just be interested if there's anything in the chat box, any questions, any thoughts about that as an idea for an online connection piece? Just uh, we've got a couple from from Martin, from Craig as well, just talking about different things they saw in, in, the, in the play, in the video. Um, so Martin trying to link that to his players and helping them understand how to play out next year. Um, interested how many under 11s can clip a ball like the keeper did there. So that might be something that, again, that's aspirational for them and realizing what I might be able to do. Uh, some bits around uh, to what we got from, from movement from Craig as well. Uh, you know, yeah, got his head up. But you could almost you knew where the finish was going to go, but it was still so good the keeper couldn't stop it. I think that's the bit. I'd, I'd be your group, Vinny, are kind of middle of the road, aren't they, in terms of age bands? What yeah. does that look like for under eights? What does yeah. that look like for under 18s or seniors? So, so my experience of working with the college side, so under 18s, I'd be looking to show them something quite tactical. Um, also, my experience with college age, I'd be looking to show them maybe, um, how would I put this, a difficult situation where tempers are running high yeah. and how do players try and deal with it and how do I get them to reflect on how they might deal with it if in a similar environment. And then if you took that right down to the little ends, it might just be some F2 freestylers off of YouTube, trying some tricks yeah. just to enthuse the kids to go and, to go and have a go. Um, some bits are coming in. Uh, so Richard, how easy is it to prepare the clips? So go on, Vinny, how easy is it to get the clips uh, sorted out? Rich, that's a great question because the linking back to the safeguarding piece that Martin mentioned earlier, we do have our parents in the background with the children. In fact, some of the parents are sat next to the youngsters but the youngsters are 11, 12 years of age, so some of them would rather their parent was just sat out a camera shop. But my point being, um, we had a little bit of an issue last Tuesday uh, with the video clips. They were actually stalling. And um, one of the parents said, Vim, would it be worth just sharing the, um, the YouTube link into the chat box and then just giving the youngsters 30 seconds to view it through their own browser? Uh, so that would be my top tip, one that I actually learned on Tuesday night, rather than showing it centrally, uh, that is a link where it says 17-year-old scores. Uh, as you can see, I've already clicked on that as the link. So just share that link into the browser and, uh, sorry, into the chat box and they can watch for 30 seconds. Uh, and just managing that, just be mindful. If you say 30 seconds, uh, to be honest, our youngsters have been really good. They've been back in the room after 30 seconds. And the key top tip I would give you is to say, as soon as you're back in, if you'd like to make a contribution, just pop your hand up in the chat box. Uh, so that would be my uh, top tip and a bit of learning that I had on Tuesday. There's a few bits coming in now, Vinny. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think we'd all be a little bit worried about trying to get that footage right. Uh, I think the other way is flip it round. Ask the kids. Go and find something on YouTube that really interests you. Football related. <laughs> I think it's probably worth adding. But and, and get them to bring it back to you because um, they're probably more digital native than us. <laughs> they'll probably go and find clips on YouTube yeah. without even trying. Um, like the idea that, that Craig's mentioned around trying to get ideas over to them because we don't have training at the moment. This is still coaching. It, it takes a bit of getting used to and it takes a skill of being able to ask the right questions and guide the players because if it turns out as a bit of a lecture of us showing a video clip and then telling everybody and everything, I think the kids will nod off pretty quick, won't they? But if it's interactive... They'd be spot on. Um, and Jamie, Jamie, the £10 in the post, said it's a great idea. I agree. Um, it's a way to connect with them and, and talk football with them that they might be missing. They've probably not done that much of because they're not getting that playground chat that they've had recently. Um, but I will add, the reason the two stars are on there is the safeguarding angle again. Just beware. You're, you're flicking up a YouTube screen. You don't know what the adverts are going to be before. So best sort of practice would be to have it preloaded. Also, the videos down the right-hand side of a YouTube screen are your YouTube history videos. Now, I'm not saying you watch anything you shouldn't, but just bear in mind that something might go in there that isn't appropriate for younger, younger viewers. So, again, just that little bit of background. You're right, Vinny. Probably the best way is to send them the footage and get them to watch it on their terms. Yeah. I think that's possibly the safest way of doing it. Any more thoughts around Monday Night Football? Well, that name's copyrighted, but we're borrowing it. Okay, well, no, I think that's Wiz on. Let's have a go at okay. the next one. I love this one, and I'm going to be really honest. I've stolen this from Norwich City. Norwich City's academy a couple of years ago. I had a, I had a mate who was involved there, 
friend through the game and um, he showed me some clips on his phone. So it was during a summer a couple of years ago and to keep the kids involved, but not full on as an academy often is of you know several nights a week and a weekend, it was during their break time, they set this. So the challenge was sense of the, the parent, the parents group connections, so whether it's a WhatsApp group, your Facebook group, whatever you have, go away and score the best goal you can. Get mom or dad to video it and share it back. Now, again, there's the safeguarding angle. Those videos have to be secure and they have to be safe and they have to be within that group only. Uh, and obviously you need the parents' permission, but by them videoing it, they are giving you that permission. But some of the goals I've seen and some of the things kids have come up with have been amazing. So uh, one, one example I saw was uh, clipped onto a shed roof, bounced off the shed roof to hit a tree to then nestle in the back of a goal that he'd set up in his, um, in his garden was pretty decent. There was one that's a bit difficult at the moment, which was two gardens down the road. And he uh, sent the ball over a garden and in, in off the crossbar in his own garden, which wasn't bad, a little bit difficult to do at the moment. But can you see your lads getting involved with this, Vinny? Would they like a, a wonder goal of the week challenge? Yeah, in fact, it's uh, your last point just on the screen there, guys. And another top tip, which is all tonight is about. Uh, but it's great that I can talk about real world stuff. I, I've been doing it just for the last few weeks, but it's been the first time. Uh, the winner sets the skill for next week. So at the end of last Tuesday's session, uh, we asked the youngsters, in fact, one of the boys said, could we record or scoring goals when we're practicing on the field with dad or a sibling? And we said, yes, that's a great idea. How about recreating a famous goal? Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, to getting stuff coming into my uh, WhatsApp <coughs> chat box probably from tomorrow once I prompt the parents. Uh, but absolutely, mate, we're, we want to encourage the youngsters to, to get out, to do some physical activity still, obviously within the, the uh, constraints. And, uh, of course, we all love scoring goals. So whether you're scoring uh, on hitting a park fence, um, whether you're scoring into a pop-up goal, whether you're scoring between uh, jumpers for goalposts, uh, yet a lot are, are really looking forward to producing something, hopefully, for this week. I think that, that idea of recreating a famous goal is fantastic because it sends them off to go and engage in a bit more football somewhere else. They've got to go and find one first. And normally, if it's a really famous goal, it's normally a pretty decent goal. So they're actually going to be practicing things that might be a little bit out of their, their comfort zone, a little bit out of their current skill levels to go and have a practice. And without going too deep tonight, because it's not overly the theme, it sends the kids off to go and play. Yeah to actually go and experiment and be creative and use their own imagination without an adult there telling them what to do and know you should put your standing foot here and bend your knee here and and actually just to go off and be a kid. I mean, out of us on the call, how many of us grew, grew up playing football in the streets where we had to work it out by ourselves compared to how many kids now grow up playing on the streets? They don't. Kids' football's become PlayStation for mums and dads. We control everything they do. This is a chance to actually get them out doing stuff on their own and then when they're ready it's mum dad come and video me when they're ready to show something so a chance to get them playing again uh Vinny, we got got a question from rich and rich you've got to stop asking these good questions um because they're difficult for us what, what would you do Vinny, if one of yours was struggling to get access to the it equipment to do this would you have a, a backup plan um i say mate i'm only two weeks into it uh we have had a few issues regarding connection um and by connection, I mean people being able to link into the Teams platform that I've been using. Uh, and I'm only using Teams, guys, because that's what we use at the FA. So it was the easiest for me to set up. So that sounds a bit lazy, doesn't it? Maybe I should have explored what might be the best uh, mm -hmm. platform. But essentially, in the last two weeks, as I say, three sessions, everybody's been able to engage via Teams. Uh, I think for me, Mark, it's just give it a go. Uh, the parents who gave the top tip last week around sharing the link so the youngsters could watch through their own browser, lean on your parents. There'll be a lot of parents within your group who've got maybe more advanced IT skills than you and I. Uh, and so, you know, for me, give it a go, uh, see how it works. We've been really fortunate that the engagement's been really, really good and everybody's been able to get in. But if you do hit a little bit of a, an issue, maybe ask one of the parents who might have those IT skills. I, th I think as well, to Richard, your, your point around inclusion. Um, 
I, I don't think we can answer everything like that. My angle, uh, I know of a friend who has had support through their school around the right equipment to be able to do online learning. So that may be an angle through there. If not, there might be something as a, as a team, as a club that can look to support. But I'd imagine that that would be down to individual situations. But it's, it's a really good point and something I've not actively spent a lot of time thinking about. So I need to. So thank you for raising that. And Mart, um, if I can just jump back in yeah. on that. Um, just a, a little example of one parent asked, could I adopt more of an individual approach? Uh, thinking that her son wouldn't engage too much. Um, as it is, he has engaged, but I did make the offer to say I'm more than happy to do a one-to-one -one, uh, WhatsApp video call uh, when we talk about individualized learning um, and personalizing the learning. I made that offer. Now, I appreciate that that could become a bit time consuming, um, but that was one little example of how I've tried to support a parent who was thinking that her 12-year-old son wouldn't engage too well. That's a great point. It's it is. Uh, yeah, look, we're we're in a world that, that's certainly not perfect, especially at the moment. This the bits tonight is around tips that would be great to do, but it may be you go look, it wouldn't be appropriate. I'm not having one of mine singled out because they can't get the same access. Hopefully, some of the other ideas we look at later will be a bit more suitable for that. Uh, Richard, you've asked another cracking question, or you made it made a very good point as well that asking the kids to you know, who they model themselves on as a player. And show there's something unique to that player. What a fantastic idea. That that will come on something we're going to drip into later, actually. So good man for getting ahead of the game. Um, we'll jump on to the next one, Vinny, because it's quite similar. Yeah, I think uh, we need to get Richard on uh, camera and microphone before we wrap up, mate, because he's clearly been doing online sessions. Yeah, so it'd be great to hear a little bit more. So uh, <laughs> he can no take my place. Richard. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Here we go. Next one. So really Thanks. similar, Vinny, isn't it? Really yeah. similar. But the idea being that they go off and they play, they go and experiment. Um, so examples I've seen of this often don't include a ball or don't include a football. So I'm seeing kids doing tricks with rugby balls, tennis balls, oranges. The idea being that they go off and try something as weird as they can. I don't know how many of you have got lost in the world of, of, of freestylers. Vinny, you're, some of your kids must be addicted to YouTube tricks and uh, skills. Yeah, not least all of them, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's the idea is we send them down a rabbit hole. Now, the, the danger is they spend all day on YouTube and not enough out in the garden or out down the park where they're actually practicing it. So there might be a little bit of a nudge to parents. Um, I've seen, Daniel, you've put a great point in the chat around using Google Classroom. Um, even something like Dropbox, where you just put the videos in so they don't spend all day watching them and getting lost down the rabbit hole of YouTube. But there, there's some there that they can then take out with them onto the grass outside somewhere. Yeah, Go Martin, Daniel, you might, jump yeah, I was going to say it might um, be we're obviously all of you coach particular age groups or you may take two or three groups, but it might be a whole club approach. And, and Martin mentioned the safeguarding bit earlier about working through your committees and I suppose the senior people at the club, if that's not you. But then also a lot of this stuff, maybe it can be shared across the whole club. So it's not just one team getting it. So, Rich, that sort of goes back to your inclusion bit a little bit. If, you, if you're if you the really proactive coach, but someone else isn't, can you create this sort of hub to share share this sort of information and challenges so it sort of rolls out across the club? And this could be something as well that you do out of lockdown. Um, maybe not as much because the kids will be back on the ground, but when games are called off or the weather's bad and all the rest of it, this is something that the kids could still do um, yeah. as homework or challenges, etc. Daniel, that last point's huge. The world's going to be different when it does get back to normal. The world is going to be more digital, whether we like it or not. So actually, can we spend this time learning a little bit so we're in a better place when we come back? So we'll, we'll leave the skill of the week. I think that probably works for itself. Should we keep going, Ben? Yeah, and just uh, that slide there does link very strongly with Richard's last point, which was actually asking the youngsters to uh, show a skill that's unique to a favourite player that they model themselves on. So uh, great idea, Richard, and uh, maybe look forward later on to hearing if any of your youngsters have uh, brought anything to the table with that one. OK. So go on, Vinny, if you were to give your group a list of challenges to try and do with the week, uh, through the week, what sort of things would jump to mind based on yours are under 12s? Yeah, I think the uh, certainly the top one would be to uh, to get themselves out there. You know, if it's not possible to do it uh, every day of the week, it would be to do some form of physical activity that's not even necessarily football. 
uh, that would be my first key challenge uh, to keep themselves healthy and active. Of course, some of the, the youngsters are still going into school if they are within a family of key workers. Uh, so that challenge is heightened even more so. Um, the other challenge would be, and I'll show you a little video later on, if they can, of course, working on technical stuff and producing a, or demonstrating a technique is great. But if they are able to engage, which the, the rules say that you can, uh, in some sort of opposed 1v1 type of work, um, the video I'll show you later is actually me playing with my 11-year-old son, Oliver, in a, a 1v1 scenario that we created. Uh, so they'd be my top two, mate. If you're able to, either with a sibling uh, or with a friend, go and do a little bit of 1v1 stuff. But the main thing is try and get out there on a regular basis. I, I can't take my former PE teacher hat off. And we want the youngsters to be healthy and active and to do regular physical activity. No, we're with you completely, Vinny. We, we, we all know the benefits of physical activity around physical health, but also mental health at the moment as well. So the number one has to be getting kids outside. And I know we're going to come on to that a little bit later. I was starting to think across the age groups. So if it was my under 18s from my previous role coaching the college side, uh, I'll give you one really specific example. So I had a centre midfielder called Matty, who um, was, was a fantastic player for his, for his level and his age. But there was one bit he didn't do well, and that was he wouldn't change the direction of play very well. So if the ball came to him from a right back to him in centre midfield, it would often go back to the right hand side when he wouldn't really notice the opportunity to spin out and try and maybe switch the play. Now, often that was a technical thing. We worked endlessly around trying to get him to receive better, to approach the ball in a better angle, to checking his shoulder at the right time, to understanding the picture before the ball even goes to the right back. But it became a technical thing. So the bit I'd be sending him to do would be to get a ball and go and find a wall, ping it against the wall, get it back and open out. And ideally, I want him between two garage doors bouncing the ball off one to the other. Again, something we did as a kid for hours, or, or was yeah. that just me? But um, <laughs> so I'd hit him, it would be something as specific as that. If they're older ones, if they're 18s, I wouldn't be doing anything that specific as we got younger. Um, I remember doing something, some of you may have come across something called the FA Skills Programme, which was a, a 5 to 11s programme from years ago. I was part of that over in Dorset. We used to give kids challenges. Um, my favourite one to this day, how many family members can you nutmeg during the week without them noticing. So the kids would be wandering around the house with a ball or again, or an orange or whatever it was, and they'd just suddenly roll it through their mum's legs without her noticing. And they would come back with a little number. And of course, it was always a lie. They always came back with like 4 billion or something silly like that. But the point was they were away doing something. They were away playing and being creative. And again, imaginative and all those things we talk about, they were away being kids. Yeah. Um, and from our point of view as coaches, they were away doing football stuff which is great for us too. So I suppose, yeah, up and down the age groups, what would you do? Um, yeah. So I hope you guys on the call tonight aren't going, oh, they said do that, I'm going to do that. I hope you're sat there going, well, what would work for my team? Would that work for my team? Do I need to do something different? Do I need to tweak it a bit? Would that be fair? Yeah, Martin, I'm chuckling away here because you've just talked about going out for your family walk this morning. Um, already referenced F2 and the fact that all yeah. over our son uh, loves um, obviously the F2 skills and uh, so many variations of, of what they do. Uh, but one that we saw just over the last few days was the, have you seen them doing the Mind the Gap? Uh, yes, I, I've heard of it. I haven't seen, yeah, I've seen bits on social media like pop up. So, so guys on the uh, the call tonight, just uh, uh, please bear with me, but it, it is really funny and it's basically doing exactly that actually trying to pop an object through somebody's legs, even if they just stood talking. And it could be a nutmeg from front to back or back to front, and then calling mind the gap. Sounds very, very childish. Anyway, we went for our family walk this afternoon. We took a, a moon ball, which is a really bouncy ball. And Oliver, for the first 20 minutes, was just constantly with me and uh, my wife, his mum, trying to do mind the gap. And he's running to me and trying to get the ball through my legs and then running to his mum, trying to get the ball through her legs. So uh, it just comes back to, again, letting our youngsters get outside, have a bit of fun. And as I say, that challenge, that nutmeg challenge is a great one, Mark. So you had me chuckling away there, mate. <laughs> you know, how, how many of us have somewhere near us got a park with a goal up on it and we go and play crossbar challenge or we go in? How long can you keep the football away from the dog? It can be as random as you like. I think the more random it is, the more likely they are to do it. 
I think if we send them away to do toe taps, they're probably not going to bother. Um, so just think, yeah, how creative can you be? It can be a top 10, it can be a top five, it can be whatever you want it to be. My ultimate, again, would be, can they start creating them? So maybe you spend a couple of weeks saying, bring your favorite skill like we talked about earlier, and then you compile a list for them to have a go at the week after. Cool. But the idea is, as with all these, can we get them active and doing something, but also connecting with us at the same time? That's what we're hoping, isn't it? Right, we had a mention earlier, Richard, it was probably you, around finding out a bit more about your players. So Vinny, go on, um, knowing you, I know you well enough, I bet you've got fantastic relationships with your players. Why and how? I think it's putting the person before the player, the stuff that I mentioned earlier around our, our four corner model. Um, so it's um, just again, a little bit for the audience, when we were planning our initial contact with you guys in terms of the new FA grassroots team, because you know there's been lots of changes at our end, uh, we were going to do a return to play and a return to match day. And one of our mantras was, and this still will happen, connection before correction. So Mart, something I really pride myself on doing, and I think it comes from experience, is when the youngsters arrive to training, uh, to practice sessions or to match day, I will spend my first seven, eight minutes just as they're doing their warm up, their rival activity, just going around talking to them, you know, asking them about their, their team, whether it be Spurs or Everton. I'm um, just thinking of teams off the top of my head, Wolves, uh, Arsenal, we've got uh, quite a range in our group. Uh, and on match days, just asking, uh, our match days are Saturday mornings, asking how the week's gone. You know, not starting uh, them feeling as if they're under pressure because it's a big game and scoreline, which just is totally not my philosophy. So just asking how the week's gone at school, uh, anything they particularly enjoyed, how they feel in this morning, what they're looking forward to, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, yeah, person before player before for me, Mart. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you're preaching the converted here with me, mate. I, I've, again, from experience, I've seen the more I know about individuals, the easier things are the better relationship we have the easier yeah. it is to coach um i, I think yeah we, we if, if you were to go away everybody and ask your players two questions these are the two i i desperately like you to ask uh first one uh, leicester city's academy do this as, a, as an example i'm sure many more do but i know for certain leicester do they ask the question to every kid every season what are you amazing at and they don't want a football answer they want something else so they might come back and I'm amazing at playing the guitar or you know, I'm amazing at another sport. It can be absolutely anything. And the value it brings is it gives you something that you can talk to them about. You can ask them about on a regular basis. It shows you care. But also when that kid goes, oh, I can't make training this week, it's because I'm doing my guitar practice. You know that that's really important to them and it gives you some yeah. understanding. The other question I desperately ask you to ask them, and you can, ask, you can be as brave as you like with this, is, what do they think of you? Describe you in three words. Decide, describe your training sessions. Now, what word describes you on a match day? Something along those lines. Um, and I'll give you two really good examples. Uh, I'll give you the nice one first. I went and saw a coach for his level two in situ um, quite a few months ago now. Uh, and I asked a few of his kids just quietly, what's, what's he like? And the first answer back was amazing. That told me all I need to know about that coach. He's amazing. And when I got into why, it was because he's so friendly, he's happy all the time, he does fun stuff, he's cool and all that sort of stuff. I then asked a, a, a couple of weeks later another coach's kids, first word that came back, scary. And I then went and told the coach, that was the coach, and these, he coached under eight, that was the biggest wake-up call that coach has ever had. We're still in contact. That was the bit that changed the way that guy coaches. Uh, I'm pleasing to say I, I know through through friends of friends that that is the case as well. But what would your kids say about you? What would they say about your sessions? I, I beg you to go and go and ask them. Um, some bits popping through on the chat. Yeah, go on, mate. Uh, what we got? I'm just reading them as I'm talking, which is I could never be a presenter on like this morning or anything like that, could I? Um, I obviously, I, I can't click the link at the moment, Martin. But I don't know if you want to unmute yourself and tell us a little bit around that, around the team grassroots. Yeah, so it's just, uh, I found it on Facebook, um, they look at all things grassroots um, and they've been coming up with ideas similar to these um, and the lockdown bingo they come up with was um, three different age groups, 
So it was uh, something like five to eight, nine to 12, and then 13 plus. And they had 16 squares and you put in there what you want them to do. So it could be 200 war passes to do that week. Uh, it could be to learn a new skill. Um, so there's there's generic ones on there, but there's also a blank version. So you can create your own and then send out to the team. I like that. I love the bingo idea. I like the, the little randomness that would come from it as well. Um, normally you gets more engagement. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, thank you, Milo. Thanks for jumping on. I know plenty around Team Grassroots. I hadn't seen that idea, though, so I will be going and visiting that a little bit later. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, Chris, I love the match attacks. I, I've done that done that myself. Um, the match attacks are a brilliant way to get them to go and just self-assess, spend a bit of time thinking about what they're good at. I think that that, that might help us know what to do when, when we get back to face-to-face -face coaching as well. So if you get half your kids that all want help with one particular area, that probably plans your first training session. Um, have you ever asked your players what games they like? I didn't notice I didn't use the word drills. Not many kids ever ask for drills. They ask for games. So what, what games would they choose if you let them? You might have one memorable one from the past that they still remember if they do do more than that. Uh, what else would you ask, Vinny? Um, what, in terms of the footy bingo or player mastermind? No, just in terms of what else would you try and find out from your players? Uh, I think for me, mate, the um, it's individual challenges for me. It's things that they want to, they feel that they want to get better at. Um, we had a, a mention <clears throat> earlier in the chat, didn't we, about favourite players. I will regularly, I've been working with these boys since they were seven, so they're now 11, 12. Um, that little piece around, who's your favourite player? And I remember one of the boys talking about uh, Paul Pogba. And uh, I said, what is it that Pogba does really well? And he said, oh, he plays with his head up and he's always looking around for the best pass. I said, OK, you, would you like that to be your challenge for today? And he was all over it. And that day, I think the lad was nine at the time. You could see him trying to play like Pogba. I talk about playing like a meerkat with your head up. And he was really trying to do that very, very well. Um, so yeah, that would be one of my key things, mate. Um, and if I can just um, jump in on the bingo idea, guys, I'm sure we're all in agreement. Um, obviously, this is about online connection tonight, but we do want to get back out on the grass when circumstances allow. And the idea of footy bingo, uh, maybe you've tried it. If not, uh, then that same concept, uh, create a laminate with nine boxes on and you can actually play footy bingo by putting things in those boxes. And because it's a laminated uh, template, the youngsters with a, a dry white pen, if the weather allows, can actually identify which of the boxes they want to score. So it might be <clears throat> um, score with a one-touch finish. It might be um, ha score with a, a combination before shooting. could be anything. And footy bingo is a great game to play back out on the grass. So I just wanted to link... Uh, the stuff we're talking about in terms of online connection with when we get out on the grass uh, next time. Yeah, great game. Desperate to do that again soon. Hopefully it's okay. not too long. Our last one, Vinny, go on as the XP teacher. I'll let you lead on this one. We've we touched on it already, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. So guys, no need to labour on this too much. Um, but as I'm sure in the last few weeks, we've been getting our heads around what the youngsters can and can't do out in the fresh air. Um, you know, for us, it's not about fitness sessions. It really isn't. It's just about getting out there and being active. It's about encouraging the children to exercise. Um, obviously, there can be challenges in there, like run or walk, uh, the furthest that maybe going on a family walk, how far do you go as a family walk? Um, but for me, a fun footy activity. Uh, so this is one I'm just going to clip to a link here. And as I say, you will get this resource. This is on my, I'm going to call it my YouTube channel. Uh, Look, I'm at not you, massive, Look at you, Vinny. Look at you. I'm not a massive YouTuber, guys. Trust me. Uh, it's something I've got set up, which is part of the day job. But anyway, I'm just going to uh, clip to a bit of action here. And uh, there's a bit of fun in there as well. So have a quick look. This is something myself and uh, our son, Oliver, we created. Can you hear? Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear it, Mark? Okay, yes. Yeah, Oliver's just moving around the ten by ten grid to show you the area. So it's the four cones around the outside, and then leave the ball alone and show where the defender starts. Yeah, Mark starts with the defender. Oliver's got to score in either that cone, this cone, or this cone. 
If he doesn't do it within 20 seconds, I take the attacking role, he becomes the defender. So here you go, guys. It's just a 1v1. Three ways to win. Oliver's got three cones to attack. Doing well. Bit of footwork. Ball runs out of play. And I just want to jump to the, the highlight of the session. You don't need to see all of this. Do you get that, Max? Just explaining here the benefits. So this is all me just doing a little bit of clipping of videos. Uh, but anyway, here's the, the highlight coming up. And also good because we're having a bit of fun. So have a go. One v one, three. So thanks for watching everybody. This second bit of footage, Oliver, what happened? Uh, Oliver skilled me <laughs> with a cheeky nutmeg. So uh, enjoy that bit of action. Okay, stay safe, stay well, and hopefully we can all get back out on the grass soon. Bye. And here it is, guys, just for your entertainment. And this was genuine. This wasn't me allowing him to beat me. He's taking me one way, taking me the other. A little outside of the foot. Here we go. <laughs> and there was the final scoreline. Okay, so just a little share. Guys, I'm not an IT whiz. Uh, that's something I played around with. And I think the key thing to share with you is, with all of us permission, I've then shared that with the rest of our families and some of the parents have come back to say that uh, them with their youngster have gone out and played that little 1v1, three ways to win. Um, so uh, the main thing is let's encourage our youngster to get out and be active and week by week as we're doing our online sessions, if you have a go at this, then maybe they can bring some footage back to the table. Anything, Mark, from you? Any thoughts around that? Anything in the chat box? No, the chat's quiet. I think Daniel's still laughing about your YouTube skills, which is a little naughty. But um, <laughs> the main um, the main bit for me there is that for some parents, they'll eat that up and they'd love a, a chance to go and play a little 1v1 with their, with their child. Others they'll, won't be so OK with that, but that, that's fine. It's about maybe giving them some inspiration to go and have a try. Think of brothers and sisters as well. That might be something that's suggested. But you're right about the footage. The, the child needs to have a say in where that footage goes. I think that's you know the the rights of the child is really important just one little quick example about just encouraging them to exercise so chart and athletic are doing something with their foundation phase where they've worked out all the games that they would have played during this time and they've plotted out how far that is and they're just having a bit of a walking competition so each day you go for a walk you log your couple of miles with your group and they're gradually walking around the south of england uh -huh. equivalent um, so you might be able to work out your games across Cornwall or, or, or visit the scenic points of Cornwall on a, and have a little competition or, or something like that. Um, linked to Daniel's point from earlier, could that be as a club? So the under 11s are trying to walk further than the under 12s and vice versa or, or something along those lines. Every walk, run or cycle contributes. Might just be a little fun way of getting a bit of a community feel that you can't normally normally get, I suppose. Uh, Vinny, it's almost though we've practiced this and we're doing well for time. Should we summarise? There we are, mate. Do you want to kick us off? Take yeah, it as we go down the list. So as you can see there, guys, on the screen, and I referenced this earlier, for me personally, the connection is as much for us as it is for the youngsters. Uh, some of you have clearly tried online connection. Uh, as I've said, I've only been doing it for the last three weeks uh, with our grassroots team, and I've really enjoyed it. I've come away absolutely buzzing. The safeguarding protocols, best practice, really important that we follow them and as martin said i think the real top tip there is don't do anything online that you wouldn't do in normal life you wouldn't go and have a one-to-one -one session uh, with a child without a parent being there be creative being imaginative that was me with my youtube footage there being creative and imaginative and uh, hopefully myself and oliver i'm homeschooling oliver at the moment uh, we're hoping to get out tomorrow and do a little bit of, actually it is going to be some uh, curver type uh, footwork techniques, uh, just as something different to share on Tuesday night. And obviously do what's right and appropriate for your players' age and stage of development. So just to summarize, a summary there, guys, um, we're mindful of time and we're also mindful of the opportunity of getting a little bit of conversation going. Uh, so again you'll receive the presentation uh, there's the contact details for martin as coach development officer for women and girls myself as pe officer and lawrence our colleague can't be on the call tonight because he's uh, just become a dad second time over and he's currently on paternity leave but lawrence is the diversity and inclusion officer 
and he has liaised already with Daniel at uh, County FA. Uh, so Lawrence is a, another colleague that you might work with in the future. So there's our details, email addresses, mobile numbers. Please don't hesitate to get in touch if you want to chat anything through. Uh, finally, next steps. Mark, you want yeah. to run down them? I think I think I, I teed this up tonight about, about being brave and, and having a go. And I, I don't think anybody will mind if it, if it doesn't quite work. I think we're all getting used to a new world at the moment or still getting used to a new world. Um, I'd encourage all of us as, as active coaches in the game to, that, that we could actually make use of this time. So if you need a football fix, go and get lost on the boot room. There's plenty of articles and videos and stories on there that you might find something new that, that interests you and excites you and, and that makes you a better coach when we come back. Love you to go and sign up for 21 Days of Positivity, especially this year. It sounds even more important this year, doesn't it, of having 21 days of a real kind of bright outlook on life around football. The Cornwall FA team are around. Um, Daniel, I know you're going to come back on in a minute. I know the staff are on varying forms of part-time furlough at the moment, but the staff are still there especially around safeguarding. Safeguarding is an area that will always be covered by the county FA, no matter what. Uh, and you've got our details if, if you want any more. Uh, if you want any more information or you want any support as, as football does start coming back, we'll, we'll certainly do what we can to, to do that. Uh, Daniel, do you want to come on and, and just wrap us up? Yeah, I think someone has asked another question in the chat. I'm just looking. Um, Jamie said, can oh, the sorry, kids yeah. school teams account or do they need a separate teams account? I, I would imagine it depends, I suppose, how um, the school manage it. But, yeah, once you've got teams, normally you can use it internally, externally, etc. So, But I think it's one for the kids and the schools to check off. Zoom is probably your easiest one. You just it just gives you, you, you just go on to Zoom. It's free for a 45-minute video call. Um, that might be your easy and point of call. You, you just get a link where people click in and then they go. Uh, that might be easier than Teams. Hopefully most of you had no problems with it tonight as well. So that... It'll be your choice where you go. I know Google do a version. Google Hangout, I think it's called as well. Yeah. Failing that, failing that, it's a WhatsApp call with everybody on at the same time. You know, there, there are ways of doing it. I think would be fair. That's a good, good say, question. The technology hasn't let us down tonight, which is always good. And uh, Shh, don't so, say that yet. We haven't finished. <laughs> it cuts off. It doesn't matter too much. But obviously, thank you from from. Uh, from us for your attendance tonight um hopefully this time has obviously worked out and we and we will be looking throughout the season to develop a, a robust cpd plan and offer for you guys which will be some of it hopefully as we get back to the grass maybe out on the grass or on an astro um but also some online stuff as well so we can we can mix and match and, and vary that throughout the year really as, as martin said what we'll try and do what we will do we'll get this presentation sent out to you guys i've done the register as well so that can be collated and sent to fa ed um and we'll also post this on um hopefully on some one of our media channels potentially youtube but we also have got twitter facebook instagram things to follow we're also hoping to release some challenges ourselves like in the first lockdown so again if you haven't done um, or aren't going to do lots necessarily uh, visually with your players you can grab some of our stuff that you'll be able to share with your with your teams and clubs that's it i think for me Vinny, hand up very polite yeah i just you know no one's popped their hand up tonight so i thought i'd do mine uh just really before we jump off um, does anybody want to come on screen and uh, have any further questions? Or Richard, I know you've given examples of clearly some online connection that you've been doing. Don't want to put you on the spot, Richard. <laughs> but you, would you be happy to explain uh, maybe what you've been doing in a, a very, very brief sentence or two? Oh, no, he's frozen at the worst possible time. <laughs> Technology, it was going so <laughs> Daniel, well, Daniel. Daniel, you <laughs> kissed it. <laughs> Richard, Richard, if you can hear us, us yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't hear you. Um, uh, okay. No, not really, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, really sorry, what a nightmare. Um, guys, just as we do log off, uh, yeah. Vinny and I will stay on for five or ten minutes and, and chew the fat if anybody wants to stay on. If you want to stick anything in the chat box before you go around, yeah, you, like I said, tonight wasn't going to be rocket science and we don't have all the answers. If you've got anything that we haven't covered that you think would be worth sharing, please stick it in the chat before you go so others can see it. But other than that, if you want to disappear and go and catch the Man City game, you're more than welcome to. And if you want to stay on for a little bit, you're more than welcome to as well. But thanks for joining us tonight.
And if you do have a go with something online and you haven't before, please let us know, maybe through Daniel, uh, how it's gone. But we're here to help and here to chat things through. Uh, and as I say, myself, the examples I've been able to give as a, a grassroots coach, just like yourself, uh, it's been really educational for me in the last two or three weeks. Uh, so, yeah, be brave, guys. Have a go. And uh, let's stay connected. Yeah. Stay safe, Stay safe everybody. Bye-bye. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Richard, looks as if you come to life again, Rich. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, if you were interested in the um, the challenge that we did, um, it was quite eye-opening, really, because... Um, some players came to me and say, well, I, you know, everyone's a Liverpool fan at the moment, aren't they? And they say, you know, I really, I work with under 10s at an academy. And then um, people will say, I like uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, but I don't know what his unique skill is. So I would um, look at, uh, you know, watch it myself and say, well, for me, he's a player that I think hits the ball with the outside of his foot better than anyone else in the league. Go away and see if you can show me that skill. And, um, you know, you get all sorts of you know people hitting wheelie bins from 15 metres with the outside of their shoe and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's um, it makes you think as well. You know, you set these challenges, but you've got to be prepared to have the answers or go away and research it. So that was what was really enlightening for me. Yeah, brilliant. And it's, you know, we, we mentioned earlier, Richard, there's an element of that, the online stuff, you know, the video clip I showed. Uh, there's still some coaching going on in there. It's not what we want it to be, but when the youngsters are talking about this, that and the other, you might have an answer uh, immediately there from experience and from knowledge base, or it might be a case of being honest as we would as coaches said, you know what, I'm not too sure about that, but I'll, I'll look into it for you. Uh, so for me, the online piece can still have a little feel of coaching about it. And that's why I think I've really enjoyed it so much. But yeah. thanks for uh, all the stuff you put in the chat box there. That was really useful and it kept us jogging along nicely. Absolutely. No problem. Thank you. Thanks for tonight. Pleasure. Yeah, bye. Bye. See you soon. Who are we, who are we still got? Oh, Martin's Martin. still got us. How are you doing? Gareth and Jamie as well. Oh, <laughs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gareth's still here. Hi, Gareth. Was that hey, useful? Gareth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just have one thought about that questionnaire you were saying. Yeah. Um, would you send it to the firm separately or send it like in a group message? I think it would um, depend on how you can get it back. Now, back in the day when I did this, we probably didn't have the digital systems and I would give everybody one each, a print off. Can you just yeah. write on it and let me have it back? If you do something like um, Microsoft, is it, no, it's Google Forms, I think is one way of doing it where you get a link and you give that to the parents and they, they all individually do it. And then you get the feedback and you can choose whether you want the feedback in one big hit or you can divide it per player or you can make it confidential. So it gives you all the different choices. Yeah, Google, oh, okay. Google Forms is really easy. To be fair, that's what we've used tonight to collate all the information. So obviously you, you registered for tonight, didn't you, via Google Forms? And then you can export it as an Excel sheet and then you've got all the information. You could You could make different charts or whatever from it. Yeah, really easy to use. I think it depends what I was asking. If I was asking them to be really, really honest and it was about me, as in some of that stuff I talk about, as in, you know, what am I like as a coach, I'd make it confidential. Mm -hmm. If it was about them and, and what they want to get better at and what they want to like, uh, and what, you know, what they're amazing at and things like that, then I'd make it available to them. But those settings are quite easy to do. I don't know if you ever played around with Google Forms or anything like that before. No, I haven't, but... Yeah, I'll have a go at that. Uh, to, well, the, the way I remember when I first started using those sort of things, I did one and sent it to myself, so I didn't embarrass myself and I made a complete mess of it and just learned that learned that way first. All right, now I'm going to try sending one to my wife. Does this come through? Does it read right? But you, you literally do. You literally put the question in and you choose the type of answer you want. So whether you want a tick box or whether you want a paragraph or whether you know the, the multiple choice and all that sort of stuff, you, it's, it is quite easy to use, but it would take having a play, I'd imagine. But yeah, I'd, I'd love for you to do it. You'll get some honest answers, hopefully. It'll help you be a better coach. That's the whole point. Yeah. No, it'd be interesting to see. What, I mean, they're only seven, seven and eight. And yeah. nine. So, so, so what, what, one of the questions I'd have to ask them is what's their favourite cartoon character? 
and the, and the majority that would be my next session so if they if the majority came back what does what my little in like appreciate he's a bit younger my little one at the moment likes blaze who's a monster machine yeah. my next session would be blaze trying to chase the baddie whose name has left my head he's never going to forgive me <laughs> crusher crusher blaze trying to chase crusher now to us coaches that's a 1v1 to him it's the best thing in the world because i get to be blaze so that would be my next line. What do they come back with and what do they love? And then building my next session back. Can you imagine their reaction when you say we're doing a session like that when they come back? Yeah. <laughs> they're, gonna they're gonna love you <laughs> if they don't already. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, thanks for joining us, Gareth. Stay safe. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.